Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, uh, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, today I will be showing you how to make this pullover for a girl. So I would say this is a spring, summer, early autumn pattern uh, because it is quite lacy like this, but it looks absolutely amazing. Okay, so this is a, a two row repeat. We have a row of these stitches and then a row of puff stitches and double crochets. Uh, so uh, if you can, please make sure that you know how to do the puff stitches and double crochets. Okay, other than that, I will show you the whole thing. So talking about sizes, I have this chart right here that will explain you everything depending on what size you want to make. So we have the choice of one to two years, two to three, three to four, four to five, or five to six years. And again, like I said, uh, I will explain everything and then the only thing that you need to do is to make sure that you get to these measurements. The measurements are in centimeters right here and this is the starting chain or the starting loops, whatever you like to call. Okay. So this uh, pullover right here, this is a size four to five years in color uh, light green, uh, absolutely beautiful. We have this front post and back post double crochet uh, ribbing at the sleeves, bottom, and the neckline right here. Okay, then the next one that I have, uh, this is a three to four years. Now, uh, I will be showing in the video that you can make it a little longer or a little shorter. Uh, again, I will explain the whole thing. So this is slightly longer, three to four years in color cream. Everything exactly the same, just slightly smaller than the previous one. Now the next one, this is the one that I am making in this tutorial. This is a, a size five to six years. So the biggest one that you can actually make uh, uh, using my chart. Again, exactly the same, just a little bit bigger and I have it in light pink. Now uh, I'm doing uh, the introduction here after I have done the tutorial and I wasn't quite sure about the amount of um, yarn that I need for this uh, cardigan and now I can tell you that 200 grams of yarn was enough for me this is how much I have left now this is not a whole lot it might have been enough to do another row or two uh, and this is uh, the short the shorter uh, uh, pullover so if you are thinking to make it a little bit longer in size five to six years you might need a little bit more than 200 grams and I have one more I have made this in two to three years in three colors now making it with a few colors is a little bit difficult because we don't know um, how many rows of each color we can do. So uh, again, you can do this, but I would suggest that you make one cardigan before and then you can count out the rows uh, and how many of each uh, rows of each color you want to make. This is exactly what I have done and I have made this three to four years. And then I kind of knew that my two to three years will be uh, slightly shorter. So I counted out, I measured it out uh, and saw how I can divide the rows into colors. Okay, so if you got interested in this, let's go and have a look of what we are going to need and we can get started on this pattern. So to make this pull over, we are going to need scissors a needle to hide our tails then we're going to need stitch markers now you definitely need four uh, I have a few extra ones uh, there is a little tricky part uh, at the sleeve uh, so if you feel that you might have problems with that you uh, should have an extra three stitch markers okay so just a few stitch markers then a measuring tape in centimeters I have a chart right here uh, and we will be able uh, to change up the size to whatever you want it to be and you will definitely need a centimeter or a measuring tape for that okay so all of my sizes right here are in centimeters uh, <clears throat> we're gonna need three hooks uh, so the main a part of the cardigan I will be making in 4.5 millimeter hook then the edging around I'm gonna use 4 millimeter hook and a three and a half millimeter hook just to make it a little tighter at the ends so 
one hook for the main cardigan and then two smaller ones just uh, for the edging and then yarn so you can use any yarn that you want I have got this wheel of yarn from um, Hobie yarns this is really really lovely it's a hundred percent acrylic uh, I have 150 meters in a 50 gram skein and it is a lightweight number three yarn or DK double knit weight okay so any yarn in this weight uh, will be absolutely fine uh, whatever you brand that you want to use let's say for example uh, this cardigan that I made these are uh, different brands uh, just the same weight okay so you can see they are very very similar in thickness so you can use um, different brands okay so how much yarn you are going to need so uh, we're going to need approximately 200 grams of yarn now I have 250 just because this is the first time I will be making a size five to six years and it's a little bit bigger uh, than the ones that I have made now so I have a 50 just on standby if I need it but I think that 200 will definitely be enough for all the sizes under five to six years definitely 200 grams was enough for me I have used up I think a hundred and 79 or 180 grams for the four to five years okay so grab your yarn choose your colors this is a uh, really like really light pink really beautiful color and the little pullover will be absolutely beautiful in it okay so now once we have everything uh, ready right here let's get started okay so to start grab your 4.5 millimeter hook your measuring tape, four stitch markers, and you now need uh, to figure out which size that you will be making. So we have the choice of the sizes one to two years, two to three years, three to four, four to five, or five to six years. Now in this tutorial, I will be making five to six years, so I will be looking at the measurements under the numbers right here. So okay, so head circumference, chest length to waist, and sleeve length. Okay. So first of all, uh, head circumference is approximately 51 and a half centimeters. So you can see uh, every size is a little bit smaller. Now, if you have the child with you, it is uh, probably would be the best for you to measure that because these are, I believe, a little bit on the bigger side. Uh, it won't make a big difference, but if you want to be uh, a bit more accurate, you can just measure that around uh, the head and you will have the head circumference. Okay, so for me, it is approximately 51 and a half centimeters. Now we need to figure out which starting chain. It's actually going to be starting loops and you will see all that is going uh, to be long enough uh, to fit over the head of the child okay so grab your yarn and we shall start looping okay so make a slip knot I'm gonna put these away for a second and to start you are going to chain three one two and three so when you have three chains done, you're going to yarn over and make a double crochet back into that very, very first chain. Okay, so three, chain three, two, and one into the very first one. Double crochet. And here we are, we have our first loop. Then again, we're going to chain three, one, two, and three, and double crochet into that bottom chain. So three, two, one. Then again, chain three, one, two, and three, and double crochet into that bottom chain. One, two, three, double crochet into the bottom. And this is how we are going to make our loops for the uh, start of the cardigan. So keep going the exact same way uh, until you have uh, let's say 22 loops, okay, and then we will be able to add if we need more. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I need to keep going until I have 22 loops. Okay, so I have 22 loops made. So 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Now we're going to give it a quick measure if we are close to the head circumference or not. So put the first loop at the very end or the very beginning of your measuring tape. And then we measure, give it a little pull, not too much. Just a little bit. So I'm at approximately 47 centimeters in length. I have another few centimeters to go to reach to my 51 and a half. Uh, now, like I said, it will stretch a lot, but uh, try just to stretch it a little bit, just to uh, kind of for it to lie down nice and flat. Okay, so about 46, 47 centimeters. A little bit short. So I'm going to try 24 loops. So I need to add two more loops. One, two, three, double crochet. One, two, three, and a double crochet. Now I have 24 loops. Let's see if that is what I need. Again. So as you can see, with a tiny little bit of pull, I am right at that 50, 51 and a half centimeters. So that is absolutely perfect. Just make sure you don't have to stretch it a whole lot because we still need to do uh, the edging around the neck and we will do a lot of decreasing. So uh, for this being very nice and stretchy and long will um, give us a chance to do a few rows that will look nicer. Okay, so once you know how many loops you have okay so I have 24 if 24 was not enough go for 26 or so on now if you need to, a little bit less or a little bit more what you can do is let's see if you need more loops you can just add another loop for the front and another loop for the back and you would have 28 okay so you would have eight right here if you need it smaller uh, you can go for five and five right here so you would have 20 loops okay so you can add a few or take uh, away a few um, depending on what you need. Now, like I said, once you know how many uh, loops you have, you are going to look at the little square with that number. Okay, so 24 for me. So to start our row one, what we need to do is we need, first of all, to connect our chain of loops. Okay, so you're going to find the very first loop right here and you're going to slip stitch into that very first chain right here where the little tail is in and slip stitch now make sure that your uh, chain is not twisted okay like this now we need to slip stitch in under those chain three so we're just gonna do another slip stitch right here and we're gonna start row one so we're starting at this point right here. This is at the back. Okay, so this loop and we're gonna start with chaining three one two and three and then we're gonna make a double crochet back into that loop So this counts as our first V stitch Then we're gonna chain one go into the next loop and make a V stitch so double crochet chain one double crochet and chain one okay so a v-stitch and then a chain one after that another one into the next loop double crochet chain one double crochet and then we chain one after that okay so I have one two three v-stitches now we need this number at the back right here so I need six uh, so six six or seven depending on which square you are doing so one two three into the next loop double crochet chain one double crochet and chain one after the v-stitch I have four yarn over into the next loop double crochet chain one double crochet and chain one, one, two, three, four, five. So I need one more to have six. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and chain 
one. I have six V stitches. Now the next loop that we have is going to be the corner. This is going to be the place where we are doing increases, okay? So into the next loop, this is what you're going to do. You're going to put a V stitch, so double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Then you're going to chain one, and you're going to put another V stitch right back into that same loop. So another double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and chain one. So technically we have a V stitch, then a chain, and then a V stitch and a chain. Or it would look like four double crochets with one, two, three chains in between them. Now after we do this, this is going to be our sleeve. So I have to make four V stitches until I get to the next corner. So into the next loop, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and chain one. This is one, two, three, and one more, four. And you chain one after each V stitch. Now again, our second corner, it is exactly the same as we did before. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, so one V stitch, then we chain one, and one more V stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and chain one. Then we go for the front right here. Again, I need a six V stitches to finish the front part. So into the next loop, a V stitch and a chain. Into the next one, a V stitch and a chain. A V stitch and a chain. So I have three a V stitch and a chain. One, two, three, four. I need two more. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Next is the corner again. So a V stitch. chain one, another V stitch, and chain one. And we should have four, five loops, four, five, or five loops left. So one, two, three, four, five for me. So we have, uh, I have four for the sleeve and one for the last um, corner. So do your V stitches and now we finish off with a corner so First V stitch, chain one, and one more V stitch. Now after the last V stitch of the corner right here, we are not going to chain one. Okay, we're just gonna slip stitch into the second chain. So these are one, two, three chains. So just slip stitch into the second chain, like this. Now grab your stitch markers. And now we're going to mark the very middle of each corner. So you can see one V stitch second and we want to mark the chain one in between them. This is the very middle of the corner and this is where the, our increases are going to go. 
then another one again into the middle chain one into the middle chain one and the last one just like that okay so our uh, row one is done now starting from the next row these are going to be repeat rows uh, so to start repeat row number one we are going to chain two one and two now the chain two right here will uh, count as a double crochet once you chain two uh, you're gonna turn around and into the very first v-stitch that you have which is the corner v-stitch right here we're gonna put our first puff stitch so you're gonna yarn over go into that chain one space pull out once yarn over go in twice in three times and one more four times now you're gonna yarn over pull through all the loops until you have one loop loop left on the hook like this so you leave one loop and then you have the loop that you pulled through the puff stitch with you're gonna yarn over you're gonna pull through and chain one now if you would like your puff stitches to be uh, a bit bigger you can um, yarn over more times but you might need a little bit more yarn uh, that way now then we have the space where our stitch marker is we're gonna take that out and put a V stitch into the chain one space. So yarn over, go in there, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and chain one. Mark the chain one space in the V stitch. Now, when you look at the pattern, we are going to be making a puff stitch in each chain one space in the middle of the V stitch, and we will have a double crochet in between the V stitches from the previous row. So right now, this is a V stitch. We start with a puff stitch. So yarn over once, yarn over twice, yarn over three times, yarn over four times, yarn over pull through all the loops until you have one loop left on your hook. Once you pull out, you have two loops. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops and chain one. Then in between, right here, into this chain one space, we're gonna put a double crochet just under that chain one and chain one after the double crochet. Again, then it's a puff stitch, one, two, three, four, <clears throat> yarn over, pull through all loops until you have one loop, yarn over, pull through the two loops and chain one, then a double crochet, and chain one. Again, puff stitch, one, two, three, and four, pull through all loops apart from the last one, Yarn over, pull through, and chain one. And double crochet in between the V stitches, and chain one after that. Puff stitch. One, two, three, and four. Yarn over, pull. Yarn over, pull, and chain one. Double crochet, and chain one. double crochet in between the two V stitches chain one now again this is our last puff stitch before our stitch marker one two three and four pull through pull through chain one and now where the stitch marker is we make a V stitch into that very middle chain one space We chain one after that. We put the stitch marker back into that chain one space. 
and then we continue on into the V stitch is a puff stitch chain one then a double crochet in between the two V stitches and chain one puff stitch double crochet puff stitch double crochet so keep going until you get to your next corner just like that I, I just want to show you the corner one more time okay so third corner I'm gonna take that out and put a V stitch in the very middle chain one space and chain one after that stitch marker back in there and start with a puff stitch and keep going until you hit that last stitch marker okay and so now we are finishing repeat row number one so again remember you have a V stitch in each corner and your stitch marker is in the chain one space in that now when you come right here so see I made a double crochet and chain one I have one more V stitch left right here and I'm gonna just put in a puff stitch pull through chain one and now I'm just gonna go under that chain two and slip stitch okay not into it but under it and slip stitch just like that so remember the chain two counts as a double crochet so our pattern looks exactly the same everywhere now repeat row number two is the V stitch row uh, again it's just a slightly a tiny little bit different from the very first one that we have done so again just have a look and remember what we do in the corners right here okay so to start the V stitch row or the repeat row number two we're going to chain three one two and three now this counts as a double crochet and a chain one we're gonna turn excuse me and now we're gonna put another double crochet right under uh, or right next to the very first chain or where the chain three is coming out of so right there right there so this is our first V stitch and we chain one after each V stitch then we're gonna look for a double crochet so we skip the puff stitch and the stitch above the double crochet is where we put our V stitch so double crochet chain one double crochet and chain one find the next double crochet and the stitch above it double crochet chain one and a double crochet next double crochet is right here double chain double and chain next one double chain double and chain and this is all we are going to do for the pattern in between our stitch markers or our corners okay and so you can see now I have one puff stitch left and then the V stitch from the corner so look carefully and just remember what we are going to do so we're gonna yarn over and we're going to put one double crochet in to on top of that first double crochet from the V stitch okay so right here a double crochet and chain one now take the stitch marker out next double crochet goes into the chain one space in the middle of the V stitch chain one then one more double crochet into the chain one space chain one and the last double crochet goes into the top of that second double crochet from the V stitch uh, from the previous row so just like that you have four double crochets with one chain in between them okay so double crochet on top of this double crochet chain one 
double crochet in the middle of the V stitch, chain one, double crochet in the middle of the V stitch, chain one, and the last double crochet goes into the stitch from this double crochet right here. Then you chain one and continue on with V stitches on top of double crochets until you come to the next stitch marker. Oh, I forgot to put my uh, stitch marker back in. Sorry about that. I'm just so used to this pattern that uh, I don't really need them. But for you, so again, you put uh, the stitch marker back into that middle chain one right here. Okay. So continue on until you get to your next stitch marker. This is a very quick row with the V stitches. chain one and then again this is my last puff stitch and then I have my corner so first double crochet goes on top of the double crochet from the V stitch chain one stitch marker out then a double crochet chain one double crochet where the stitch marker was in that chain one space so double chain double then chain one and one more double crochet on top of this double crochet from the V-stitch. Stitch marker into the very middle chain one. Chain one and continue with your V-stitches on top of the double crochets. So this is all the wrist to this uh, row. So all corners are exactly the same as I have just shown you so keep going and I will see you right here at the end of this row okay so I'm at my last corner so everything is exactly the same we are going to put double crochet on top of that double crochet chain one stitch marker out into the chain one space double chain one double chain one and a double crochet on top of that double crochet from the V stitch now remember once you make the last uh, double crochet right here you don't chain one otherwise it will leave a bigger hole right here and it will be really noticeable so if you don't chain after the last uh, double crochet for joining it uh, is nice and unnoticeable stitch marker into the middle chain one right here find your second chain so one and two and slip stitch to start repeat row number one again remember that you chain two and you turn this counts as a double crochet and right into the next chain one space you put a puff stitch one two three and four pull through you have two loops pull through and chain one where your stitch marker is you put in a V stitch double crochet chain one double crochet and chain one mark your chain one space and then again you can really see very well right now so this is a V stitch so you put a, a puff stitch in the chain one space and then in between the two V stitches right here you're gonna have a double crochet so a puff stitch one two three and four pull through pull through chain one double crochet chain one puff stitch so I think you should be okay with a pattern or uh, or you would most likely know by now where you put in your puff stitches and your double crochet so I'm just gonna go really quickly 
to the next uh, corner Okay, so double crochet, chain one, and puff stitch. Chain one, <clears throat> and then a V stitch where your stitch marker is. And chain one after that stitch marker in and then you continue on with a quad stitch okay so keep going I will see you at the very end of this row so as you can see how the pattern is starting to fall into the place okay so keep going I'll see you right here and again finishing off the row is a puff stitch pull pull chain and slip stitch under the chain two so I'm not gonna go in it I'm gonna go under it and slip stitch okay and then it is again repeat row number two which is exactly the same as we have done right here you start with, with chaining three one two and three and you turn and a double crochet right under the very first chain so right here and you have your first V stitch chain one find your next double crochet and a V stitch and chain one and V stitch so you keep going doing that and I will just quickly remind you again you can you can see how I did the um, increase in the corner right here in this row so when you get to the V stitch you're gonna have a double crochet chain one double crochet in the chain one space chain one double crochet back in here chain one and double crochet right here and then you just keep going so you keep repeating these two rows so this is how it looks at the moment until we reach the chest measurement so I will show everything uh, a bit more clear when I'm finished this is just a quick look okay so you're gonna find the chest for the size that you're making so 66 for me is the full circumference around the chest but as uh, our uh, pullover is not yet connected we're only going to look for the half of it so 33 centimeters for me okay so I will be <coughs> crocheting until stitch marker to stitch marker right here will measure approximately 33 centimeters or a little bit less like if it's uh, if it will measure 32 and a half I will be happy with it okay and make sure that you when you measure you don't measure the short side this is going to be the sleeve there's less uh, let's say puff stitches on this side and this is the front which is um, wider uh, this is it for now I will see you in a few seconds uh, it will take me a few minutes to do it so keep going until our pullover is wide enough for us to connect okay so when you have your yoke done and this measures to the uh, chest measurement uh, this is what you should do you should put the yoke on a smooth table or a uh, surface and leave it for a few minutes now there's a very good chance that it will actually shrink a little bit because we are not when you're not handling it now when I measured this row with the uh, uh, puff stitch it actually measured uh, right to the point of the chest measurement I left it down and it actually shrunk uh, by a centimeter and a half so I had to add, uh, add another row just uh, to, for it to be 
actually uh, to the chest measurement okay just because we use a lot of chains sometimes it shrinks when you're not handling it okay so uh, it doesn't matter what row you finish on, if you finished on V-stitch row or if you have finished on a puff stitch row. I will show you both ways how to connect your yoke. So I have an extra one made. Now this is going to get really, really easy now uh, because we are not going to have corners anymore. Uh, it will be much, much easier to go around. Uh, our rows will start and finish the exact same way. First of all, we will measure just to see our chest measurement okay so let's have a quick look so chest right here and the lower number this is this is a half of the chest measurement so I have 33 centimeters 32 31 30 or 29 okay so 33 centimeters and I will measure from one stitch marker to another like this and as you can see I have a approximately 32 and a half maybe a little bit less so I'm just a little bit short now don't worry we're gonna have a few uh, chains uh, underneath so it will expand it uh, a tiny little bit okay so uh, first of all we are going to start uh, with connecting when you have finished on a V stitch row okay so like I said it all starts exactly the same uh, as before you're gonna chain two and turn and now we are going to yarn over and make our puff stitch into the next stitch so one two three and four we're gonna pull pull chain now we're going to put a double crochet right where our stitch marker is like this and we're going to chain three one two and three so just like I said it it does expand that chest measurement just a little bit don't worry if you're uh, a little bit over the chest measurement absolutely fine this is a pull over and they actually look nicer if they are a little bit looser then we're gonna skip all this okay because this is a sleeve and you're gonna put a double crochet into the uh, next stitch marker into the chain one space where the stitch marker is chain one and puff stitch and then just continue with the normal pattern until you get to the next stitch marker okay so keep going I will see you right here So I'm at my next stitch marker, so a puff stitch, chain one, and you will end up with a double crochet where the stitch marker is, then chain three, one, two, and three. Skip all this. Again, this is a sleeve. And then double crochet into the stitch marker, chain one, and puff stitch into the chain one space double crochet chain one puff stitch and continue on until you get to your starting point so again this is just the usual pattern okay so I'm finishing the joining row right here and I have my last puff stitch And I'm just gonna slip stitch right under that chain two. And again, like I have mentioned, it starts and it finishes exactly the same as we have done before. The only thing is now that we're gonna go uh, around and we don't have to stop for the corners because we're finished with that. So just a quick reminder, you chain three because we're on a V-stitch row, you turn and you start your V-stitches on top of the double crochets from the previous row. So keep going, I will see you at the chain three on the other side and I will, we will have a look where are we going to put those V-stitches in there, okay? So 
so this is our chain three so we have a V stitch on the top of that double crochet that we had in the stitch marker where we put it when the stitch marker was so a V stitch chain one and we're gonna skip the chain three and we're gonna go into the double crochet after the chain three and after that you just continue on all the way around until you get to the other side of the pullover where you have the other chain three on the other side exactly the same a V stitch on top of that double crochet before the chain three chain one and a uh, V stitch on top of the, the double crochet on the other side of the chain three now again remember it's still the same we don't chain after the last V stitch and into the second chain we slip stitch chain two and turn and then continue on with the pattern so you know that it's a puff stitch in the uh, into the V stitch and a double crochet in between them okay so you keep going all the way around join V stitches and so on you just now need to build up some length uh, so we can finish the uh, main portion of our uh, pullover uh, and now I will show you how to connect if you finished on the puff stitch row okay so if you have finished on the puff stitch row this is what we are going to do for joining now where you have finished okay uh, so the chest measurement is correct right here okay so you're gonna chain three and start your V stitches until you get to that stitch marker once you get there this is what you're going to do. You're going to put in a double crochet into that first, the top of that first double crochet from the corner stitch right here. You're going to chain one and put another one, a double crochet right where the stitch marker is. Now you are going to chain three, one, two, and three. I'm going to skip all this. This is going to be a sleeve. And on the other side, double crochet in the chain one space where the stitch marker is chain one and double crochet into that top of that double crochet behind the chain one and then chain one and continue on as usual with your V stitches so keep going I will see you at the next stitch marker at the next stitch marker again double crochet on top of the double crochet before the chain one with a uh, slip sti uh, stitch marker double crochet into this chain one with the stitch marker chain three one two and three <clears throat> skip all this this is a sleeve and on the other side double crochet where the stitch marker is chain one and a double crochet into the top of that double crochet right after this chain one no chaining after the last one so this counts as a V stitch we're just gonna slip stitch into the the second chain on the very first V stitch I'm gonna chain two and we're gonna turn so this is actually this is the good side so I want this side of the puff stitches uh, to uh, for everyone to see this is going to be the face side okay so when you chain two so like I said this is a V stitch so we're gonna pull, put a puff stitch in there I'm gonna chain one after that and then into the middle of those three chains we're gonna put in a double crochet I'm gonna chain one and right after that chain three right here is a puff stitch chain one and continue on with the pattern until you get to your next um, stitch marker so keep going with your pattern to here 
Okay, so this is the stitch marker and the chain three. So again, this is a V stitch. So we put a puff stitch, double crochet in the middle chain. So one, two, three, this is the very middle. Chain one and continue on with your pattern. Now at this point you have your uh, one, two, three, four uh, pattern established and you can just keep going as usual starting and finishing the same way I have showed before okay so as you can see this is the sleeves all is connected so you just go back to where you have started this is a puff stitch chain one slip stitch chain three and start your V stitch row so easy as that we have this connected I'm gonna put this away for now and so the next thing is to build up or to keep crocheting for the length of the pullover now how long it should be I have a very basic measurement and this is very very approximate okay you can always make it longer if you like so length to the waist okay so you look up this measurement so for five to six years is approximately 26 and a half centimeters now I measure that from the shoulder down okay so just a little bit under the shoulder so you can see right here just a little bit under and I measure I am at approximately 21 centimeters now and I want this to be at least 26 and a half or longer so this is where the waist would be approximately right here okay and then we're gonna have quite a bit of the front post back post ribbing at the bottom and now there's a few choices for you okay if you would like it uh, to be longer than that you can see I'm thinking about spring I'm thinking you know nice little jeans underneath and so on so you can make it longer with a pattern or you can add more rows for the front post back post double crochets whatever you want or you can keep it kind of short with a little bit of edging uh, or finishing at the bottom whatever you feel comfortable with now I am going to keep it um, a little short so I will try to get to that 26 and a half centimeters maybe a little bit longer and then I will do the uh, ribbing underneath it okay uh, so for now keep going and the uh, one thing that we want is we want our last row to be the puff stitch row it just looks a little bit nicer okay so I will keep going for another little bit and I will come back and we will finish off the main part of it together and so here we are I got approximately down to where the waist is so length to waist approximately 26 and a half centimeters from just under the shoulder it's approximately 27 so I'm very very close to there I'm happy with that like I said if you want it longer uh, you can make it longer but I really really do like the the sort of uh, shape where the sleeve is longer or, or the look where the sleeve is longer than the actual uh, cardigan itself and again it will have a good bit of the edging at the bottom approximately five centimeters uh, uh, will be added to the length uh, perhaps I might even do an extra row uh, just to make it even bigger I'll see when I um, when I'm at the end if I want to do another one or not okay so to start the bottom part the bottom edging what we're going to do is we're going to uh, change the hook size so I'm gonna go down to four millimeter and I'm gonna chain two one and two and turn now again remember I have this row of puff stitches at the bottom I just prefer it not to have hollow row so V stitch row would look quite hollow at the bottom but if you want the V stitch row it's completely up to you you can do that as well I just prefer this one okay so after you chain two you're gonna turn <clears throat> and we're just gonna put one double crochet into each uh, stitch so where we have the chain one I'm just gonna go under it and 
put a double crochet there and then one on top of the puff stitch and then in the chain one after and then on top of double crochet and chain one above puff stitch the chain one and the double crochet and I will keep going all the way around just like that okay so once you finish you want to join into that second chain like this chain two and turn and now we're going to start our front pose, back pose, double crochets. I'm going to go just really, really quick, quickly um, about this. Okay, so chain two, chain two on top. Okay, so this is our seam. This is our joining point. You start with a front post around the next double crochet and then the back post, double crochet. And front post and back post. And front post and back post and just like that very simple I'm pretty sure that uh, you are very familiar with the front post and back post double crochet so I will leave you to this keep going all the way around okay so I'm finishing this row and this is what I have at the end now it's probably I have lost a stitch somewhere I just want to make sure that I didn't make a mistake that I didn't do like two front posts uh, one after another no I didn't so I must have uh, skipped a stitch somewhere it's okay so what I end up with is a front post double crochet and I have one double crochet left that would be a back post and then the chain two but that would leave a lot of space like a big gap right here uh, that is not sticking out so what I'm going to do I am going to make a front post around the two double crochets that I had left and that is just going to fall into place okay so if you have a, a correct number of double crochets it's absolutely fine you just finish on your last one with a front post double crochet uh, and then we are going to connect into that chain two so slip stitch into that chain two now I'm going to uh, change my hook again onto a smaller one so my 3.5 millimeter hook and I'm going to chain two and turn and now I'm just going to go around uh, the way the front and back post stitches are so if I'm looking from the inside <clears throat> the next stitch is on the outside so a back post double crochet around that and then a front post and a back post all the way around and then you finish this row you connect into the second chain uh, once you go all the way around chain two turn and start your front pose and back pose double crochet so it's not very difficult I'm gonna leave this at that now how many rows you should do of this technically it is as many as you want now for all of my cardigans that I have made I had four rows of front post and back post double crochet so I'm not counting the double crochet row that we have done right here okay then it's one and I'm on my second one now so three four I will most likely do actually five rows for this one because uh, I don't want it to be too short uh, so I think five will be perfect but whatever you decide on I would suggest probably at least three rows so it looks nice um, finishing right here okay so do as many rows as you want of this and I will see you when we finish and we will do the neckline and so I have finished the bottom uh, I did make five rows of front post and back post double crochet and that ended up uh, being approximately six centimeters long very happy with that it is nice and thick okay so once you finish that you want to chain one and cut your yarn and now we are going to do the neckline okay so we are starting with a four millimeter hook 
and start anywhere really that you want. Uh, I prefer uh, to do that probably on the shoulder somewhere, not right in the very, very front of it. So make a slip knot and we will do a row of double crochets. So you see a loop right here, okay? So there's one space right here and then there's a little thread right here. So I'm gonna put a double crochet here, one behind that little thread and one right here in between those starting loops. So I'll start right here, chain two and then a double crochet like I said, it's like one is in one side of the loop and one double crochet is on the other side of the loop. I'm going to go here, double crochet, and then in between the loops. Then one right here, one at the end of the loop, and one in between the loops. and one in between. And just like that, all the way around the neckline. Okay, so finishing this up, my last double crochet is in between the loops. And slip stitch into the second chain. Change your hook to a smaller one. Chain two and just like at the bottom we are going to start with uh, front post and back post just as I am right now. So this is the face side okay so I'm looking at the inside of the cardigan so I'm going to start with a back post double crochet okay back post, front post, back post, and so on. Just like that, all, around, all the way around. Okay, so finishing this row up, my last stitch is a back post double crochet and slip stitch into the chain two, chain one. Now the next row and the last row that we are going to do is going to be front post and back post single crochets and it will really nicely tuck this in. Now if you feel that this is really, really wide, you can do double crochets uh, because they are longer stitches they will close the gap a little bit more but single crochets do a really really good job uh, just tightening it up a little bit okay so chain one and just single crochets so I have a front post right here so front post single crochet and then a back post single crochet and front post and back post just like that, all the way around the neckline. And finishing my last front post single crochet and a slip stitch, in, slip stitch into that chain, chain one, and cut your yarn. And so <clears throat> we have now finished the main part of the pullover. Now this is really nice and stretchy. It has a lovely shape and all we have left to do is the sleeves. So let me get ready. I will have one sleeve made once I come back and we can start on the other one together. And so we're going to start the sleeve so this is quite simple so the sleeve is exactly the same as we have done right here only on a smaller scale it will start and finish the same we just need to establish the pattern because we have some double crochets and some chains here so uh, we just need to get started 
on here. And again, uh, there's, uh, some of you might have the finished with a V stitch and some of you might have puff stitches. So I will show you both uh, how to start off either way, whichever one you have. So we are going to start with this and uh, if it's easier for you, you can take two more stitch markers okay just to mark the places where your puff stitches are going uh, to be so now you, you should still have your stitch markers this is, is the place where your um, corner was so what you want is you want to move these up so I'm taking this out and to move it into the V stitch above it okay because this is where the puff stitch is going to be okay and then the same with the other one so you can see where your last V stitch is which is right here and then we are going to mark the place where our puff stitches are going to be that we need to add to establish the pattern right here okay so this is the chain right here and the double crochet so we're gonna be putting those puff stitches into that double crochet so I'm gonna mark that right here so this is the double crochet and these are the, this is the chain three and exactly the same on the other side see the double crochet right here I'm gonna mark that this is where my puff stitch is going to be now you don't have to mark that uh, it's not that difficult just for somebody that perhaps is a beginner that might actually be easier okay so grab your the hook that you used for your main pattern grab your yarn make a slip knot Find your chain three at the bottom right here. Connect into the middle chain and chain two. One and two. I'm gonna leave that tail. I'm gonna hide that afterwards. Okay, so again, chain two start, uh, uh, counts as a double crochet that we start with. And then you can see where your next stitch marker is and you put a puff stitch in there. pull pull chain then you want to put a double crochet into the chain one space right behind it chain one and then you have your V stitch and put a uh, puff stitch in there and then the pattern goes as usual double crochet in between V stitches and a puff stitch chain one double crochet puff stitch and you keep going all the way around until you get to the next stitch marker okay so this is just as normal so I am at the next stitch marker and there's a puff stitch in the chain one where the stitch marker is chain one I'm gonna take this out then right behind it into the chain one space we're gonna put in a double crochet chain one and then the last puff stitch goes into that uh, double crochet uh, now it is uh, usually it is easier to go all the way around it but it will leave a big hole so that's why I'm gonna go right into the middle of that double crochet like this one two three and four pull pull chain and we have now established the full pattern around the sleeve so the chain two right here I'm gonna go under it slip stitch chain three turn and start making my V stitches on top of each double crochet just like we have done before so not a whole uh, lot to tell there so just keep going with the pattern you know how to start and finish nothing special there we just need to get 
some length on the sleeve which I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit later after I show um, the other one how to start your sleeve if you have puff stitches right here okay so for now keep going I will be back uh, with the measurements in a few minutes okay so now if you have finished with puff stitches right here we are going to have a row of uh, these stitches and uh, first of all this is where you have your stitch markers now we need to move them a little bit okay as we're making these stitches on top of double crochets so you can see there is a double crochet right above the stitch marker okay so puff stitch and your last double crochet so there is going to be a V stitch in there and the same with the other one pull that out find your last uh, puff stitch and the double crochet so there is going to be a V stitch right here now we need to put in two more V stitches underneath so I personally prefer to put them right here uh, let me show you right here where the you see the puff stitch is uh, uh, so there's a double crochet the chain right here and the puff stitch so right above that puff stitch underneath and the same on the other side so you can see this space right here or just make sure that you you kind of have them spaced out approximately evenly now because we don't have the very very uh, middle right here we need to start in one of those uh, stitch markers just choose one I will choose the one to the right because the um, the connection the seam is going to move one way uh, so I'm gonna choose this one right here I'm going to make a slip knot now we need to make this row from the inside of the sleeve so lo looking at the inside I'm gonna put my hook where the stitch marker is I'm gonna take that out makes it easier so right here I'm going to chain three one two three and a double crochet back in there chain one then the space uh, the place where the other stitch marker is the stitch chain one take that out and then I will be looking for those double crochets so V stitch V stitch and so on until you get to your next stitch marker right here okay so next stitch marker so V stitch chain one then the next stitch marker and as this is the last V stitch I'm not gonna chain after that so as usual I'm just going to connect into that second chain of the first V stitch and then you just chain two and turn and you start your V stitches and double crochets so V stitch double crochet so I'm um, quite uh, sure that at this moment you definitely know the pattern very well if you got to this point so again everything is exactly the same as we have crocheted right here at the bottom now I'm not gonna finish this cardigan I'm gonna frog it um, uh, I do not need another one uh, so exactly as we have done here uh, connect start the row finish the row and just go on with the pattern making the length of the sleeve okay so let us now talk about the length of the sleeve and what we are going to do here so like I said you just continue on the pattern uh, until you're kind of approximately five centimeters short of the sleeve length okay because again we want to be uh, to do very similar as we have done here now I have one less row on the sleeve but again you can make it shorter or longer depending on what you want or what you need uh, to do okay so 
about the length of the sleeve. So this is the sleeve right here. This is the length of the sleeve, okay? So let's say uh, I'm making five to six years old, and the length of the sleeve should be approximately 28 and a half centimeters from the underarm. So underarm is right here, and it should be 28 and a half centimeters long. Okay. Now, the one thing is, so I have added another uh, line right here with a yoke. Now, we have not measured the yoke as we were making the cardigan. Sometimes when you're using uh, some specific stitches, it is easier uh, just to go, uh, just to keep making the yoke until you actually get uh, the chest measurement rather than stop at the length of the yoke and then chain a lot because there would be, like the choices would be like, uh, three chains or seven chains and then 11 chains and so on. Okay, so it would be a lot of chaining right here So what we did is we did not measure this length to the underarm now because of that our underarm Might be lower down than it should be so that makes it so if this is too long And then I add the full length of the sleeve the sleeves are going to be way too long Okay, now I'm not saying that is going to be the case for everybody, but first of all we are going to measure the yoke so find one of the corners where we have started and measure down to the underarm okay so it should be for me it should be 17 centimeters so i'm gonna put my measuring tape right on the top of that loop the where i have started at the corner so right up here i'm gonna measure down to the place where the uh, sleeve is starting so you can see I'm at 20 centimeters long. I should be at 17. <clears throat> so all already my sleeve is three centimeters uh, longer. You know what I mean? Uh, the underarm should be right here, but it is three centimeters lower down. So that means I'm going to take these three centimeters and I'm just going to count that as if my sleeve is starting at this point. Okay? So if it was supposed to be 28 and a half, from the underarm, I am already made three centimeters. So all I have left is approximately 25 and a half centimeters, okay? If I measure from where it should be, <clears throat> okay? So I pulled it down a bit. So it's approximately 26 centimeters that I have, okay? Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, just because this is too long for me, I have to start measuring my uh, sleeve higher up. I just don't want the sleeve to be way too long for the child. Now, some of you might have this correct. Uh, it is no problem at all. You just measure then from the underarm uh, for the length of the sleeve. Again, uh, so have that in mind, how long this part should be for you, and then just leave the last approximately five centimeters for the cuff right here, okay, for the ending of the sleeve. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm going to make the other sleeve right now and then I'm going to come back and I'm just, uh, just in case somebody didn't understand that, I'm just going to measure that in front of you and I will show you um, that it is too short and then you just add the missing length in front post and back post double crochets. And so here we are. I have uh, finished the almost the full length of my sleeve. I just have the cuff left. And just a reminder, so again, this is what, how I measure. First of all, I'm gonna look up the yoke, so 17, and then my sleeve, 28 and a half centimeters long. I remember those both. So, from right here, 17 centimeters is approximately here. And then I measure the sleeve from that place, and I'm at approximately 23 and a half centimeters, and this need to be 28 and a half, so I have about this much left for the cuff, so approximately 5 centimeters. And my last row is the puff stitch. Again, I prefer this row for the uh, ending. Just looks a bit more finished, uh, but it doesn't uh, really matter, okay? So, to finish the cuff now, again, uh, don't worry if you have less left uh, than 5 centimeters, you can just make the cuff uh, shorter. Now, grab your smallest hook, so I have my three and a half millimeters hook, and now we're gonna do a lot of uh, decreasing, just to take this in. And again, your uh, sleeve might look a little bit um, 
wide but just as right here with the chest measurement because we were handling it it is kind of stretched out uh, one more thing don't worry if you ended up with your uh, the place where you are connecting your stitches at the side because we started at the bottom right here it's just that the stitches move one way like I have said so now I have like on the side of the sleeve again it's uh, don't worry about that okay so uh, to start our cuff we are going to chain one and turn so I am on the inside and now what we're going to do is we're going to make two single crochets and then skip a stitch or a chain whatever comes next okay so I'm gonna skip that one so I chained one I'm gonna go in the chain one space single crochet then single crochet on the top of that uh, puff stitch so two single crochets in the row and then we need to skip one so I'm gonna skip the chain one and I'm gonna go right into the top of that double crochet single crochet then again I'm gonna single crochet in the chain one space skip the puff stitch single single skip single single skip single single skip single single and skip and so on all the way around the sleeve until you get to the place where you started okay so I went all the way around so I have two single crochets in a row right here and I have one more stitch so I'm gonna skip that one now don't worry if you have a single crochet here it doesn't matter okay as long as we have done a good bit of decreasing right here whatever you end up with here is absolutely fine so we are going to join into the very first uh, stitch with a slip stitch we're going to chain two and turn and now what we want is we want to count the number of our double crochet so count uh, the chain two as your first one so one I'm gonna go into the next stitch two three four five six seven and so on count all the way to here okay so I have one more stitch left and this is 34 so technically the the number itself doesn't matter we just want an even number of double crochets including that chain one so 34 is absolutely fine now let's say if you uh, have an odd number of stitches right here and you run out of stitches you can use a stitch right here underneath the chain two to add another one okay as long as it is an even number stitches that you have your perfect so slip stitch into the top of that chain two chain two and turn so this is the outside of my sleeve so I'm gonna start with a back post double crochet and then front post so we want to have a um, stitch that is right here next to the chain two uh, like a puffing out okay so a front post there or a back post but it's on the outside it has to be sticking out and so on and just finish this row swapping around the front post and the back post double crochets and my last stitch is a back post double crochet to match this one and slip stitch chain two turn and again we have done this before so if you see a front post you would do a front post around it and so on and so forth and make as many rows as you need to get to that missing length or to get that sleeve to the length that it needs to be like I said it is for me it is four rows of uh, front post and back post double crochets so keep going I'll see you when I finish my uh, front post and back post double crochet uh, four rows and here we are I am all finished I just need to connect with a slip stitch 
I'm going to chain one and I'm going to cut my yarn. Now all I have left to do is hide two tails because I did hide all the ones uh, around the neck and on the inside and where I have been joining. So I'm going to quickly show you that if I can find my needle somewhere. Yes, I can. So now the nicest way that I find to hide the tails right here where you finish is So I'm going to pull it a little tighter I'm just going to go right into the stitch right next to it and into that seam like this. As you can see it just pulls it in and you cannot see any kind of knot or anything on it. I'm just going to go a little bit lower down, catch a piece of yarn and just go back right back up the same way. And that's it. Get that off. And one more. I still have my stitch marker in here. And the one at the bottom. As you can see, it is right here. So I am thinking I'm going to hide it a little bit above in this part right here. So I'm just going to bring it up and then a little to one side to catch some stitches. And I'm going to go like this all the way back. And maybe one more time because I'm mostly hiding it in the chains. So like this. So nice and neat and secure so I'm finished with mine you most likely have one more sleeve left to do and the other sleeve is exactly the same as the one that we have just made so I'm just trying to make some space on my um, on my table so this is what I have so unfortunately it doesn't all fit into the uh, screen so you can see my sleeves are longer than the cardigan itself again uh, I do prefer this uh, especially for spring summer early autumn uh, when you don't really need all that much uh, heat it's a little bit for me perhaps for beauty to have it with the long sleeves it looks absolutely amazing this I really really like it I, I like the feel of it as well and it is really eye-catching and I really do like <clears throat> excuse me how the neckline looks if you put it like this look how lovely and round that is and it is really stretchy as well so you can easily get the head through okay so thank you very much for watching I hope that you have enjoyed that and made one or a few uh, for some children that you know uh, I will see you in the next one let me know what you think of this okay bye